Hello and welcome to the program. It's now official. There will be at least 33 presidential candidates vying for the office of president in the 2019 general election scheduled to begin February next year. Now, some of the candidates who have emerged include Donald Duke of the Social Democratic Party, Kinsley Morello of the Young Progressives, uh, Young Progressive Party, YPP, Obi Ezekwesili of the Allied Congress Party of Nigeria, ACPN, and Fela Durotoye of the Alliance for New Nigeria, ANN. Now, those are just a few names of the long list of candidates vying for the biggest office in the country. But the race is expected to come down to just two parties and two candidates, the ruling APC's Muhammadu Buhari and the PDP's Atiku Abubakar. Now, it's been a formality in the past few months that President Muhammadu Buhari will emerge as the candidate of the All Progressives Congress in the poll. Buhari had announced his intention to run for a second term since March 2018 and was not expected to face any challenge within the party. His, candidate was rat his candidacy, I should say, was ratified by the party at its national convention last Saturday, where it also confirmed the huge support the president retains within the party. He got 14 million votes to get the party's ticket unchallenged. Now, the big question was, or yeah, at that time was, who will challenge the president at the election in 2019? The biggest opposition was expected from the ruling, the former ruling People's Democratic Party. Now, the presidential race in that party was far from a formality. It included political bigwigs like Senate President Bukola Saraki, former Vice President Atiku Abubakar, former Kano State Governor Rabiu Konkwaso, and Sokoto State Governor Aminu Tambual. By the way, all of these men used to be in the APC not quite long ago. But at the end of the highly contested convention, Atiku Abubakar polled 1,523 votes to defeat his closest challenger, Tambual, who polled 693 votes. Saraki came third with 317 votes. So at the end, that answered the question of who will be the PDP's flag bearer and arguably President Muhammad Buhari's biggest challenger. Now, Atiku immediately got to work, seeking the support of many key players in Nigerian politics. His effort paid off when he got the surprise backing of his former boss, Olusha Gwabasanjo. Now, it's always been a well-publicized fact that the two men have not been on good terms since the final months of their tenure together. Obasanjo had repeatedly distanced himself from Atiku's presidential bid and had always accused him of being corrupt, but he has now seemingly had a change of heart and publicly endorsed the PDP's candidate when he led a delegation to visit him in Abelkota. Basanjo is well regarded as a top player in Nigerian politics. He backed incumbent President Muhammad Buhari in the last election, but now but has now fallen out with him. So the question is, is Obasanjo's endorsement of Atiku on would it have any impact at all? on the presidential election. Could this propel the former vice president, I'm talking about Atiku Abubakar now, to victory in 2019? As expected, the presidency has reacted to Obasanjo's decision. And uh, presidential spokesman uh, Garba Shehu described the meeting as uh, a well-rehearsed theater. He also described Obasanjo's comment that Atiku could perform better than President Buhari if elected into office as, quote, ignorance of today's politics, end of quote. Now, Shehu explained that Nigerians voted for change in 2015, and a leader that ensures good governance, who, which only President Buhari and the APC can provide. Buhari's campaign team has also been reacting. Spokesperson Festus Kiyamo has dismissed the endorsement as a complete non-event. Kiyamo also questioned the credibility of Atiku and Obasanjo. But before that endorsement, APC governors met with President Muhammadu Buhari to congratulate him on becoming the party's candidate. After that meeting, Imo State Governor Rocha Sokorocha also maintained that the party is not worried about Atiku's emergence as presidential candidate. Take a listen to what he said.
Now, the APC might be but the final decision certainly lies with Nigerians who will vote at the 2019 presidential election. Joining me now to discuss the possible impact of this recent event is Dr. Sadiq Umar, who is uh, the Secretary General of the Arewa Initiative for Good Governance. Doc, thank you very much uh, for joining us on the program. Let me start by asking you, you are based in the north, and of course you are from the northeast uh, Gombe State. Uh, T tell us how the, the candidates are now, the both candidates of the, I'm talking about the candidate of the PDP and the APC, how are they being received in the north of the country? Well, I think uh, I can say that uh, they have been received well. First and foremost, you know, in politics you have uh, three important issues to do with elections. One, the political party itself, the candidate themselves, and the electorate. So the two candidates coming from the two major parties, and particularly now that all the two parties were tested over the years, so people have everything to receive the two candidates and assuage what has happened over the period when they ruled and see what they can be able to make out of the two candidates in the 20. 19 general elections though to some of us it will have been beyond even the two major parties if not for the shooting at the football some political parties that have an opportunity to provide the third force which will serve an, an alternative to the two parties but unfortunately they shot themselves at the foot now we are only being contended primarily with the two major parties and two major candidates now, now we, we, we know one of the candidates, Atiku Abubakar, for instance, of the PDP, is from the northeast. Uh, the incumbent president, Muhammadu Buhari, is from the northwest. So in the north of the country, is this being seen? I mean, the contest now, is it being seen as a battle between the northwest and the northeast? To be very sincere, as I earlier said, it's not just about the contest between Atiku Buhari. It is, it is about many factors. First and foremost, as I earlier said, is something to do with the political parties themselves, the credibility or programs of the political parties, what were they able to usher in when they were given an opportunity. The PDP was given an opportunity for 16 years in the country. And uh, of these 16 years, Another now ruled for two years, Eradua, then the four, remaining 14 years between President Olusegu Obasanjo and President Gulnok, uh, uh, Jonathan. And uh, most of the states were governed by the PDP in the last 16 years. You know, so people are looking at it beyond just the PDP and APC candidate. <coughs> they are looking down to the political parties themselves as key political parties from 1999 to date, particularly the PDP. So people are entirely estranging the entire 16 years period that the PDP led the country. What were they able to usher in for the North and uh, the, the, the different geopolitical zone and the states where they have governors that rule the state. In fact, some of the states, the governors rule for almost the, the number of years. And in some of the states, they rule for at least eight years or thereabout. And they have majority at both levels, at the national level, the states the state assemblies, the local government, and so on for these years. So what were they able to usher in during such period that they ruled the country and the states and local governments for this period? This is one on the aspect of the political parties themselves. Mm. The APC somehow are given the opportunity for three and a half years today. In the three and a half years also, they are privileged to have, to have the control of the center and also control of majority of the states in the north about 17 states as it stand before the depiction and so on. Today, I think about uh, more than 12 states or there are 13, there are about. So people are also looking at it from the change mantra that they promised Nigerians in the last three years. What were they able to do in the last three years that makes a difference with the 16 years of PDP rules and the northern <coughs> interests and so on and so forth? So really, these are the issues. Thirdly, the electorate themselves, the electorate are looking at what are the parties or the candidates really after their well-being. What were they able to do 
in the in the in the last years between 1999 to date that was able to affect their lives you know in terms of infrastructural development in terms of home and capital development in terms of other issues to do with education that is one of the serious issues affecting the north agriculture you know and many other things so people are looking at it along that line then so, so, from so there are, are they not looking at even the, 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 the individuals themselves. I'm talking about the individual candidates themselves. Say, looking at Buhari, the kind of person he is. Looking at Atiku, the kind of person he is. Looking at the characters of these individuals. Yeah, that is why I'm now taking you the line along the line of the political parties on the one aspect. Mm. On the other aspect, the people are looking at the candidates themselves. The candidate, you have an Atiku, who was the vice president for eight years. Who was, so, who was seen as one of the most powerful vice presidents world over, not just in Africa or Nigeria. You know, particularly in the first four years of his uh, ascension to the office of the vice president of Nigeria, he was adjourned the most powerful vice president ever in the history of Nigeria. And in fact, world over is one of the most powerful vice presidents. So what was he able to do in the last, in those years, the first four years, and uh, the second four years, which is about eight years, what was he able to do for the North in terms of infrastructure development? What is he able to bring into the North mm. in terms of that, in terms of many other factors? And apart from that also, what was his record in government? What was the relationship between his principal and himself and the many other things, particularly the revelation that come from the mouth of the principal who is now trying to chew his weight and so on? So, and also, how was he able to carry the people of the region alone Along. and provide that leadership as the leader of the Lord being the number two citizen, you know? And uh, what was he able to affect the life of the people, of particularly even though not is where he hailed from, that, is, that was the most devastated and the most backward in terms of whatever indices that you can use, uh, you know, for national development or, uh, and so on and so forth. So these are the issues. And also, the people of Adamawa also has a state for, uh, going down to, from the northeast to Adamawa. They have a lot of things to say, yes, these are the issues. Atiku was the vice president for, nine, for eight years, one of the most powerful vice presidents. He uh, oversees and uh, chaired most of the economic policy organs of the government, from privatization, economic team, and so on and so forth, as the vice president. He brought in many of the key players that shaped event, the event of the 20, 20, 1999 to 2007 mm. and so on. So how was he able to affect the life of the Northeast and in particular even the Adamawa? You know, how was it before he became the vice president? Particularly now if you are talking of Adamawa, if you are going to his local government, Jadaganye from Mayabolo, from Adamawa, if you are passing through... How is there anything that have to do with the change of life of the electorate there? So these are the questions people used to ask, and many others. And I'm sure they are going to be mm -hmm. a decider to whom they will decide to support in this aspect. Okay. If you are coming to the incumbent president, Mahmoud Buhari, mm. people are looking at it that when from the time Buhari was, a, Buhari was the governor of Northeastern states, Buhari was the President Commander in Chief, Buhari was the chairman PTF, particularly from the PTF years to death. These are the indices that people are looking at to judge who is a Buhari. And also from the time he became the president in the last three and a half years to date, what was he able to do? One of the most critical issues, particularly in the northeastern states where I think we hailed from, where Buhari was the governor of the zone of the entire the northeast as a state then. Buhari, one of the key issues to do that affect the people and give them sleepless night in the insecurity issue. The level of poverty, the level of insecurity in particular in the Northeast, particularly Borno, Yobe, uh, and Adamawa, where the PDP candidate came from. And uh, so people are looking at it. Before the coming of the Buhari administration or the APC administration, if almost most some of the local governments in the areas were being taken over by the insurgents, you know, there are a lot of issues. 
okay. to do with poverty and uh, backwardness in education in the terms of agricultural was and so on and so forth. So where are they today? People are looking at it along this line as no. well. Okay, something I have to ask you too, because you, you, you actually alluded to that in, 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 in the course of uh, this discussion. Uh, how much impact do you think the endorsement of former President Lushego or Basunjo now could, could have in the north of the country? Is it going to have an impact for uh, uh, vice, uh, former Vice President Atiku Abubakar? Uh, your take on that? I want to assure you, I, uh, from my own uh, from my own analysis and my own following of events in the country in the last uh, almost 20 years of uh, democratic rule, you know, from 1920, I want to assure you that today, not just in the north, even in the southwest or Ogun State, I don't want to believe that whatever Obasanjo will say will impact on anything in the southwest or even in. Uh, in Ogun State, talkless of India, not. They're not new what happened when Obasanjo was in prison, the role played by the northern leaders, clergy, and so on to get Obasanjo released, the role they played in giving Obasanjo the opportunity to serve as the democratically elected president, despite the fact that everybody knew what has happened between him and Chief Olufalae in, in 1999. But yet, what has he done to the north? that he can think, he can decide for the not what will happen. This is the same thing that happens when Obasanjo won tried in the, first, the third term, which put them aside with the vice president, who is the uh, president candidate of the PDP. And thereafter, Obasanjo brought Eradua for the north, again the will of the northern district and so on. And uh, what happens when Eradua left? So I don't think uh, Obasanjo uh, uh, endorsement of Atiku will in any way, will in any way, affect whatever in the north in particular. I don't know of the southwest, maybe they have forgiven Obasanjo, they have them, but I know when the 20, 1999 election took place, Obasanjo didn't win any vote or local government or state in the southwest. What do we have? In the north we have nine, nine AUMPV governors and PDP have uh, the, the, the control of majority of the governors in the south, is, uh, south, is south, south and some substantial part of the north. The AD, which is primarily this uh, southwest party have six governors in control but before Obasanjo left they were left with only Lagos if not for Sinibudu silence and so on and the AMPP before FDP left before the community administration ended up with only four governors so in reality I don't think in any way why how Obasanjo will affect the distance because the electoral are wiser today the electoral are more enlightened today the electoral will not be deceived by just uh, big names and so on and so forth because people are wiser people are more enlightened people are ready to take their destinies into their own hands when people can uh, in 2015 when you have an income and government that have control of more than 70 percent of the or 80 of the states and all other level national assembly senate and so on look at what happened then so how will Obasanjo affect anything? I don't think people will take Obasanjo for anything serious. For what Obasanjo said. Obasanjo didn't know it will come to this end. Had it been Obasanjo not it will come to this level, I am sure he will have been regretting some, some of the things he said about the PDP candidate. Or rather he will have gone another way to have gotten another, a, to have supported a more, a, a more somehow credible or youthful or somebody with different traits in the PDP, I am sure among the candidates that participate in the PDP, there are many with that. You have the Tambor, you have the Dangun boys, you have many others and so on. So, but nonetheless, now that it is only for him, an alternative, he doesn't have any alternative mm -hmm. other than the incumbent and an Atiku, and he fell out with the incumbent on some obvious reasons and some interests, he now decided to say he's supporting this. Well, to me, I don't think he has his right as a former leader, as a, somebody who has a, his board, at least he has control of his board, and probably maybe his family or so, but I am sure his endorsement in the North will not change the narrative okay. of what okay. is now, really uh, uh, on Doc, the ground. I, I want us to take a short break. I'm, I'm going to come back uh, to you, and um, uh, next I want us to take a look at uh, how you think the election is going to play out, especially in the North of the country. So we'll take a short break, and we'll be right back. On Digi360, 
people don't just ask the questions. What is wrong with amending the constitution the way uh, the, the National Assembly members have been doing it? We seek answers. The constitution is constituent. Our problem is not um, lack of laws. Our problem is lack of the willpower to implement our laws. Answers that provide clarity. While we negotiate, we should try to make it a point that the girls must be complete. The clarity you need to make informed judgment so that you can make the right decision and take action. People are saying it is you politicians that are responsible for this, that you are the reason oh, why this is happening. All these dollars that call themselves governors in this country? I wish we had people like Tony at the National Assembly. God forbid that I go to join that uh, family. Digi 360, providing clarity to issues. All right, welcome back. And uh, if you've just joined us, you're watching DG360. And uh, with me is Dr. Sadiq Umar Gombe, who is the General Secretary of the Arewa uh, Initiative for Good Governance. Uh, Doc, thank you very much for joining us once again. Uh, now, let us look at how this election is going to play out. A lot of people have said, look, uh, no doubt Buhari has a cult following in the north of the country, but that somehow he probably would have lost um, so, some goodwill in the north of the country, when you consider some of those who have uh, defected from the party. Take, for instance, the governor of Sokoto State has defected to uh, the PDP. Uh, the former governor of Kano State, Senator Kwankwaso, has also defected. A, a number of people have also defected. Now, you look at all of these defections. How much impact do you think these defections will have now on the chances of, say, uh, of, of, of President Buhari in the north of the country? Well, Mustadeji, I think uh, in the north, really, people are wiser in terms of uh, voter education and uh, how they are going to participate in the 2019 general election. But the issue is, I want to tell you that in reality, the north have a lot to usher in, in determining who becomes president in Nigeria because Absolutely. of the, its size because of the number of registered voters, because one of the third critical element in the election, electioneering process, apart from the political parties, the candidate themselves, is the electorate. <laughs> Here, the electorate, you are talking of the number. If you are talking of the number, the newly released INEC, number of registered of voters in Nigeria, have the northwest with about 19 point something million which is over 35 percent of the total then followed by the southwest with almost about 15 million 14 point something mm. followed by the south south north is north central and then finally southeast the northern part of the country constitute about 54 to 55 percent of the total registered voters in the country where the northwest alone have a total number of registered voters which is almost equivalent to the south, south, and southeast of Nigeria. And uh, the cult followership, as you have earlier said, of General Mambo Buhari, the fact that, yes, it might be possible as a result of the defection, he may lose some, some little followership in those states because people are not separating the issue of state election and national elections. In, most, in some of the states that you have this defection and so on, or disenfranchisement by the electorate, it might be possible APC would lose some of the states. Mm. But it's not likely President Buhari will lose those states, even though the governors defected. Mm. This is a reality. I'm talking from the reality point of view, not just as a, from the political point of view. <laughs> if you are talking of Kano, where Buhari got majority of his vote, which is almost, almost equivalent to the votes in the entire North Central, or three to four times the number of votes he got in the South, South and South is combined, or almost 500,000 less than the vote Buhari got from the Southwest entirely, Buhari got 149 from Kano alone, whereas in the Southwest he got only 2.4, in the North Central 2.2, South, South, South is combined about 600,000. I want to assure you the defection of Concoso <laughs> Now, with the defection of Shekharov from the APC, from the PDP back to APC, will neutralize whatever effect the defection of Konkoso will have provided in the 2019 general elections. In mm -hmm. fact, 
it will be even more distinct. So, had Kokos Konko so managed Shekaro in PDP when he came back to PDP and met him, managed him and suppressed most of his selfish and personal interests, they stayed together in the APC, in the PDP. There is some chances that they might contribute to the reduction in the number of votes that General Buhari would get in Kano, but certainly they are not going to deny him winning Kano, even then. Mm. But they may, they may take over Kano as a party uh, from, for the state election. But now with the depiction of Shekaro back to PDP, and with the crisis now breathing in the, the PDP PC, by taking over the governorship from Konkoso Illo now back to Takai and so on, as we have been hearing, I want to assure you that they may end up having a worse situation than the 2019 in Kano because actually Konkoso and also Konkoso with the with what happens with him in the PDF in a general ele presidential election primaries where he got only 158 votes as almost one tenth of what Atiku got when he beat Atiku in APC in 2014 primaries he beats Atiku in APC but now Atiku getting 10 times his votes his vote did not translate him going beyond Kano. In fact, he didn't even capture 35% of the vote in Jigawa apart from Kano. So in this regard, I don't want to believe the issue of Konkoso would have any effect that will affect Buhari's chances in winning Kano. Let's look at the South-South and the South-East. Uh, okay, appear you go that, to the South-South. Um, South. Even though the, the government, uh, I mean, the, the president has done... Uh, quite a number of things in, in the southeast. He, he, whether we like it or not, he's still not as popular there. No, it's re in reality, he is not at Fofula in the southeast as people thought it to be. But the only thing is that there is no way you can think of the president getting 198,000 in the five set of the southeast in 2015. I want to assure you this time around, there is no way you can, you, if the election comes, you write it and keep it. There is no way you can get not less than a million or, or more, which might be five times or more of the number of votes he got in 2015, which is good enough for him. At least if he can get 25% in two states or even one state, which he did in the, in the, in the, in the previous election, where he have 25% in only 27 states, which only one from the south-south, but the south is and the remaining state of the south-south, he could not be able to get the 25%. But I want to tell you this time around, there is no way you can deny him having the 25%. In some of the state of the south, <coughs> south, let's say Edo, which the APC is in absolute control of Edo, with the national chairman from there who ruled for eight years, when the incumbent governor, you cannot deny them taking over Edo that they didn't win in 2015. That's why the fact that they have a, a sitting governor because the president comes from that, that end. But today they have two presidential candidates that are all above 70, that are all from the northeast, that are all Muslims, you know, that are all northerners, you know. So in this regard, they, it will not appeal to the south, southerner to say, okay, I'm going to elect a, a PDP because of Atiku, or because good luck say, okay, elect Atiku. That sentiment is still there. Some of them will not want to align by going against the incumbent at the federal level. They want to come to the center. So if they want to come to the center, definitely there is no way you can... Then, and also in Nigeria, we know the evil fall, it is how it is. They always want to... They don't want to go far away from the center. They have never been in the history of Nigerian election that the evil went far away from the center, unless uh, during the MPN. And even then, because they have a zig. But today, there is nobody from the southeast that is aspiring. And in fact, if the PDP made a mistake of not even taking the running mate from the southeast, that would have been just a, a suicide. Because the Ibos will have it on the table that, yes, today we have a, a northern president, we have a northern candidate, and all at the same time we are not going to have the vice presidential candidate. And if we now shift a loyalty from the center, not to elect APC, to go for FDF, that means FDF will stay for eight years. That means they will be eight years away from the <laughs> throne. That means until even 2018, 17 or so, that they will be thinking of the presidency. Who 20, knows what will happen before 20, then? 2023. So 20, 2018, if yeah, they elect so. Because the president will go for, for eight years. They give me that Atiku said he's going to stay for eight for four years. It's just something else. Even the incumbent, the time they said he's going to go for eight for four years, but he's now going for the, for the eight years. So in reality, with this, now that the pendulum is tilting, that 
the presidential candidate of the PDP is going to take a running mate from outside the Southeast, that means anything can happen in the Southeast. But even uh, if he take a running mate from the Southeast, mm. with APC under uh, Imo under APC, and some of the state governors of the Southeast having a good romance with the president, Ebonyi, Anambara, and Co., you may deny him winning the state, but actually, if he were in the Southeast, may win most of the state, you know, or all, but it, to some to some of the state, they will not deny the income from having the 25 percent. So, if the election come 2019, I want to assure you, write it down and keep. There is no way the income president will get 20, will get less than 25 percent in 30 states, as against the 25 seven states that he got in the last elections, whereas good luck got in the 24 state plus FCT, which is the uh, requirement constitutional requirement for you then secondly you have majority of lawful votes mm. so when you take the number if you take south southwest and northwest alone they have more almost 45 percent or so of the total number of registered now, voters uh, very, in very quickly doc we, we just have to wrap up because we, 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 we we've actually overshot our time but very quickly and i want you to be very brief about it i mean all these analyses you've painted you don't think uh, uh, things could change between now and the next uh, the, the, the election. We still have about three or four months. You don't think things could change, for instance, like one, one the PDP candidate now could, could turn things around and, uh, and turn it against the incumbent? Well, in a political uh, analogy, there is no way you can say things will not change, mm. particularly if it is a, in a sophisticated democracy and so on, unlike ours, things will change with, even within a week or month. But with the way things are going and with the kind of political parties that we have, today I want to assure you, if you are taking up the APC as a, as, a, as a ruling party, what makes people to be in APC is more of the candidate than even the political party itself. Because not that people believe in the political party, particularly what that has happened or have been happening with their primaries in most of the state. Take mm -hmm. Tarabo, for instance. Take the Zampara, for instance, where they have the chairman governor's forum. So check even Imo, where they have the APC uh, chairman governor's forum. The same thing if you go to the PDP, it's even in the PDP that you find out that the people will believe more in the party to some extent, particularly in the South, than even the candidate that make them to appeal to the party mm -hmm. in, 20, in 2019 than the candidate. So in this aspect, to some extent, actually... I don't see something that didn't change in three and a half years with the by-election that took place in Oshun, AKT, Koji, Kasina, Bochi, and Co. The thing didn't change in this. This far, the fact that people are talking about hardship, about this, about that, about all the negative campaign and so on, that they will change in just less than four or so months. All right. Dr. Gome, thank you very much. That was quite incisive and very detailed. Thank you very much for your thank beautiful you, contributions. Thank you, brother. Thank you, thank you. All right, we'll take a short break and uh, the program will be right back. On DG360, we don't just ask the questions. What is wrong with amending the Constitution the way uh, the, the National Assembly members have been doing it? We seek answers. The Constitution is constituent. Our problem is not um, lack of laws. Our problem is lack of the willpower to implement our laws. Answers that provide clarity. While we negotiate, we should try to make it a point that the girls must be complete. The clarity you need the to make informed judgment so that you can make the right decision and take action. People are saying it is you politicians that are responsible for this, that you are the reason oh. why this is happening. All these dollars that call themselves governors in this country? I wish we had people like Tony at the National Assembly. God forbid that I go to join that uh, to the DG360, providing clarity to issues. 